Anatomy of the axillary nerve. The axillary nerve arises from the posterior cord of the brachial plexus. You can see this diagram that shows the axillary nerve and other branches from the posterior cord of the brachial plexus. The nerve supplies the deltoid muscle and the teres minor plus lateral shoulder sensation. The axillary nerve passes over the subscapularis, then curves backwards below it and underneath the shoulder joint capsule to enter the quadrangular space. This is the descriptive anatomy of the quadrangular space. The boundaries are the teres minor above, the teres major below, the long head of the triceps, medial, the humeral bone lateral. In the quadrangular space, the nerve is accompanied by the posterior circumflex humeral artery. They run around the surgical neck of the humerus. Immediately after passing through the quadrangular space, the axillary nerve divides into anterior and posterior divisions. The anterior division curves anteriorly under the deltoid muscle. It innervates the deltoid. And the posterior branch supplies the teres minor and the rest of the deltoid. It also gives the upper lateral cutaneous nerve of the arm, which supplies sensation over the lower half of the deltoid. This close relationship to the joint makes the nerve more prone to injury from dislocation of the shoulder or fracture of the proximal part of the humerus. Axillary nerve injury the axillary nerve provides abduction of the arm between 30 to 90 degrees. Test the deltoid by having the patient abduct the arm against resistance. Feeling and observing contraction of the posterior head of the deltoid by having the patient abduct the arm against resistance and by moving the arm posteriorly and superiorly against this resistance. This is a good test to assess the posterior deltoid. And also try to look for deficiency in sensation around the shoulder area. The axillary nerve is fixed at the quadrangular space and is vulnerable to injury because it is fixed. It is the most commonly injured nerve around the shoulder, usually from trauma, such as fracture or dislocation. So if you have a young patient unable to abduct the shoulder after an injury, it's probably an axillary nerve. But if it is an older patient, probably a rotator cuff tear and not necessarily an axillary nerve. The diagnosis of axillary nerve palsy may be very difficult. The descending cervical plexus may supply sensation to the involved area. Other muscles may help in abducting the arm, mimicking the deltoid function, even if the deltoid is paralyzed. The initial theory degree of abduction is controlled by the supraspinatus. Abduction above 90 degree have some control by the trapezius. The serratus anterior can assist the anterior deltoid during flexion above 60 degree. Another important point when we do shoulder surgery, we should avoid injuring the axillary nerve. This is a diagram that shows the incision and where is the nerve and what is the danger zone and what is the optimal incision.
This video is for educational purposes only. Please consult your doctor before you make any decision about your medical care.